Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of BTX. And welcome to our class on MACD, Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. One of my favorite technical indicators. Now, tonight's class, of course, is sponsored by ETX Capital. And ETX is a regulated provider, so I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk and seek advice if necessary. ETX Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be construed as a personal recommendation or advice. All traders must understand there's a high element of randomness to the markets, and therefore, they will experience both winning and losing trades while following a strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. <clears throat> now, in tonight's class, we will be looking at a couple live charts of different assets. These assets that we're gonna be looking at are not for any other reason but pure randomness of choice. There is no recommendation. There is no reason except to properly put on and read MACD. So please, when we look at these charts, do not think that I am trying to tell you to go trade that asset. And in fact, all the charts that we're gonna be looking at will have at least a 30 minute delay on pricing so that they are not at current market prices because we are not here to give you any type of trading advice or recommendation. Now, ETX is a fast growing financial services company and we are based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. And up until recently, binary options, which is also offered on our platform, are not, we're not a regulated product, but as of January the 3rd this year, they fall under the FCA. But ETS Capital will be discontinuing them from their platform in a short time by the end of this month. So please be aware of that. And if you have a binary options account and would like to, you know, you um, like to move your funds over to a CFD or a Forex account, there's no problem. Just contact customer support. Um, we are also a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with ETX, you can trade on our ETX Trader Pro platform. That's our online platform. And we just launched a new version of our Trader Pro platform. Or you can download our MT4 professional trading environment. Whichever one you want or both of them, it's not a problem. But you should check out our new Trader Pro platform which allows you to customize your screens, make trades very easily, has advanced charts, and you can use everything we learned tonight for MACD to use them and put them right on the charts on the new Trader Pro platform. If you haven't tried it out, give it a shot. You can always go back to our old version if you don't like the new version. And we have full classes on how to use the new ETX Trader Pro platform. It's a very easy to follow platform and gives you lots of features and helps you make better trades and has faster execution. Now tonight's class is being recorded and to see a recorded version of this class, just use the same link you used to come to tonight's class in about 24 hours and you'll be able to watch a recorded version of tonight's class. So let's get started learning about MACD. Now, it was developed, or MACD, Moving Average Convergence and Divergence, was developed by Gerald Arpel in the late 70s. Now, when it was originally developed, it was developed for primarily stock trading because there was no other types of online trading at that point. But it's been adjusted by Mr. Arpel over the years to fit all of the different markets, especially Forex. Now, it is used to spot changes in strength, direction, and momentum and the duration of a trend in assets price. The MACD is one of the most popular and broadly used indicators for Forex trading. 
The letters MACD is an abbreviation for Moving Average Convergence and Divergence. The MACD indicator, which requires moving averages as an input, falls in the group of what's called lagging indicators. If you're not sure what a lagging indicator is, you should come to our class on technical indicators. But a lagging indicator follows the market. A leading indicator predicts the market. A lagging indicator tells you that a change has happened in the market. The basic function of the MACD 4X indicator is to discover new trends and to help identify the end of the current trend. There are various ways to gauge the signals generated by MACD and many traders use their own unique settings and methods around this trading indicator. Now, I have taught this class for a long time. I've rewritten this class more times than I care to remember. But the fact is, to learn to understand MACD is a very wordy proposition. And no matter how I try it, and I'll try going back and forth to live charts, and I'll try to show you things on charts, it's a lot of words. And because MACD uses four different derivatives, I've got to explain each one because once you understand where all the information comes from, you will then be able to figure out on your own how to use this indicator. Now, MACD is an indicator, as an indicator, is typically placed at the bottom, at the bottom of your trading chart. The moving average convergence and divergence is a relatively easy tool. However, it is crucial to understand it fully before attempting to trade using its signals. Okay. I'm sorry, I've got somebody here who keeps writing messages that he can't hear me, and no matter what I answer him, he keeps writing, I can't hear you. And I keep giving him instruction, but he doesn't want to listen. So I just have to get him taken care of. So give me one second. Ah, okay. Now, sorry about that. The concept behind MACD is fairly straightforward. Essentially, it calculates the difference between an instrument's 26-day and 12-day exponential moving average. Of the two moving averages that make up the MACD, the 12-period EMA is obviously the faster one, while the 26-day or the 26-period is slower. Now, if you don't, or let me give you a, just a brief explanation on moving averages. A moving average is simply the calculation over, if it's a 12-period moving average, the last 12 periods, say closing price, added together and divided by 12. Now, if you were going to use a 12-period moving average, okay, and you're using a one-hour chart, you'd actually be covering 12 hours of the day. Now, each hour, you would use the most current hour and go back that plus 11 hours divided by 12. If you're using a 26 period moving average, you would be using the last 26 one hour on a one hour chart. One hour Hold on, this guy's back again. Let me just see if I can be though. So if one is using 12 one hours and one is using 26 one hours, 
the faster would be the 12 day, be, the 12 period moving out, because when the, the current market price either soared up or soared down, it would only be that plus 11 periods back divided by 12. Whereas if you were using the 26 and the market price just soared up, you'd still be dividing it by 26 periods. So that's called the slower moving average. So to do MACD, we're using a 26 day or 26 period moving average and a 12 period moving average. Now we have also simple moving averages, exponential moving averages or weighted ex moving averages. Now, at the end of the day, at the end of the period, you have two moving average lines. Now, a simple moving average is goes back 12 periods, a exponential moving average goes back those same tail periods, but gives a little bit more value to the more recent price and a little bit less value to the old price. But these are not things you have to calculate or figure out. Even if you're just using a straight moving average, you just click calculate, click on exponential moving out and it, the computer does all the calculation for you. But to start the MACD, we have to start with the 12 period and the 26 period. So let's go over to a live chart. Okay. And I popped it up on your screen. And what you see on here is the Euro US dollar current chart for today. And I've already placed on here a 12 period and a 26 period moving average. So we have two moving averages on the chart. You see one in blue and one in gold. Plain and simple. And if we were to use a standard moving average strategy, that's all we would have to do when we look for moving average crossovers and use those for trading signals. But MACD only starts at this point, okay? Because once we've used these 12 and 26 period moving averages to do our next calculation, we no longer have them on our charts anymore. So we're starting out with the 12 and the 26 period moving average on our charts. Now, let's use some basic common sense here. When you see the 12 and the 26 period moving average cross over each other. What would be the difference between those moving averages? At the point they would cross, they would also be always be zero. So keep that in mind because we're gonna go on to the next step. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. And let's talk about what we do next after we've put on our, our calculated, our 12 period and our 26 period moving average. Okay. So the name is based on the lesser moving average of price continually converging or diverging from the greater moving average. The default setting for these two averages is 12 and 26 respectively. Now, anybody out there can change them. You can use a 12 and a 22, a 12 and a 24. You can use a 19 and a 26, but then they're no longer MACD. They're then Barry's indicator or Barry's average because then you have to test it and back test and make sure that it works. These indicators developed by Gerald R. Pell was and tested is 12 and 26. Okay, somebody just asked me, why do you need MACD? 
why not just use the averages on the chart directly? Because a simple moving average is just that. It's a simple moving average. And like I explained to you, it's just the beginning steps in the calculation of MACD. MACD is a four-point derivative that gives you a much better understanding or much better indication of how the market's working. You can use a basic moving average crossover anytime you want. Or you can use it for MACD, which is the beginning step of just the first step of starting a MACD calculation and using a much more advanced indicator. Now, once we have these 12 and the 26 moving averages, we then calculate the difference between the moving averages. So we can start out at zero. That's pretty easy. Whenever they cross over, they are zero. So if we were to go on the bottom of our chart and draw a zero line and start plotting the difference of the MACD on the chart, every time we would plot the difference, it would be at zero. And it would then cross the zero going upward if the longer MACD, the shorter MACD was longer than the, bigger than the smaller MACD. And if it was just reverse, it would be down below zero because you're only subtracting the nine, the 12 period from the 26 period. That's all you're doing and coming up with the difference. So what we've done is we've taken This part, which is just a simple moving averages on the chart, and we started to put that into a derivative to form below the chart, which now starts to show us a price difference based on two different time periods of movement. So we then have our first line put on the bottom chart, and this line is called the MACD line. But again, like I told you, this is pretty wordy because we now have to come up with what's called the MACD signal line. And the MACD signal line, again, is another derivative of the derivative. The MACD signal line is also placed on the bottom of our chart. And what that is, is a nine period moving average of the MACD or the difference between the two moving averages. Okay, so that's a lot to say. So we have two lines that form below. One is called the MACD line and the other is called the MACD signal line, which is also known as the trigger line because when the MACD line crosses the signal line down below, not the moving averages up above, it gives you a very specific buy and sell signal. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is, as you see on this little chart on the right, when the MACD is placed on the bottom of your chart and the MACD line crosses down and below the signal line, it gives us sell signals. When it crosses above, it gives us buy signals. So MACD can be helpful for noticing potential trend changes at very early stages of a currency pairs move. However, if we wait for the zero line crossover, we are essentially trading a moving average crossover, which is inherently lagging the market and may not be optimal entry point. So in other words, if we're trading simply using the MACD line, we're just trading, as someone asked me before, a moving average crossover line. So you wouldn't actually need that. So this is where the signal line comes into play. The signal line is simply a moving average built on the value of the MACD line with a nine period moving average. Building on that relationship, the MACD line itself, Traders will often look for 
entry opportunities when the MACD crosses its signal line. So once we've got the MACD line on the bottom of our chart, we no longer need the moving averages on the chart. And we no longer need numbers. We're looking at now the relationship between the two lines. That's all we're concerned about. And we're going to take it one step farther in a minute. So let's go back to the Euro US dollar chart. I'm sorry, let me. Okay. And so if we simply go up to indicators and come down and look for MACD. We can then remove our moving averages from our charts. And what we have down below, which has done all the calculations for, there's nothing you have to calculate. We have a zero line right here. And we have the MACD line. And we have the MACD signal line. So what you want to do whether you're using the charts on ETX or you're using the charts on TradingView, you want to come make sure you set these up. Okay. So what you want to do is color code, and I always color code my MACD line in blue and my MACD signal line in red. so that I can recognize them very easily without confusing them on the bottom of the chart. So now I know when I look at the chart below, the MACD indicator down below, I know my MACD line is the blue line, and when it crosses the signal line, which is the red line, it's giving me buy and sell signals. Now, that's a very simplistic explanation because MACD gives us signals in three different ways. But we have to go to one step farther because there's one more derivative, and this is known as the MACD histogram. This is what the orange bars that you see right here are. They're drawn on the same zero line that we started out with. But again, now we have the MACD signal line and the MACD line, which are derivatives of the original 12 and 26 day moving averages on a chart. But again, we have two lines. When they cross over, what are they going to be? What's the value going to be? At the crossover point, the value will always be zero. So if we map these on a histogram, and a histogram is simply a bar chart. So if we were to map these on the histogram, we would always have the crossovers at zero. When the MACD line was larger than the signal line, it would be moving up in a positive slope. And when it was to cross and reverse below, it would move down in a negative slope. At this point, we really can see everything that is happening in all of these calculations on this MACD histogram. So what we see on this MACD histogram below is simply the Derivative of the derivative of the derivative of the derivative, which then generates the signals. And we can then use simply this MACD histogram. But now, how do we use this to, to, to make trading sense? That's the question. So once we put all this on the charts, we then have to figure out what can we do with this information? Because like I said, this is very wordy. We had 
a derivative of a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. But now we've derived at this final conclusion of all of this analysis of all these different numbers combined together. So we have it. We're finished with actual the mathematics. Now we have to use it in our trading. So there are three ways that we use MACD. And that's one of the reasons MACD is such a great indicator because it provides us three different sets of uses. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. Okay. And let's talk about this. So in an effort to move to more closely follow the relationship between the MACD and the signal line, traders can follow the histogram. Traders can, which is simply a bar chart plotted around the zero line to indicate the relationship between the MACD and the signal lines. So if we watch the histogram, we can tell the entire story of what has happened in all of those lines. So MACD gives us three different stories to look at. So MACD proves most effective in wide swinging trading markets. And there are three popular uses or ways to use MACD. There is convergence, there is divergence, there's crossovers and overbought and oversold conditions and divergences. So one will generate buy and sell signals. One will explain market conditions, like the market is overbought or oversold. And the other will show us when there's a divergence between the way the price is moving and how the indicator is moving. So the first and most simple way of using MACD, and one of the most popular, is trading crossovers. The, MAC, the basic MACD trading rule is to sell when the MACD falls below its signal line. So in other words, you can see on this chart, when the MACD line, in this case, the MACD line was the black line, and it fell below the signal line, it is giving us a sell signal. And you can see down below when we have the crossover, what happened in the market above where after we got that signal. When it crosses above, so here the MACD line rose above the signal line. It gave us a buy signal. Now, if you look at the histogram at the same time, when they crossed over, the histogram was always at zero. So if you look at the histogram and then the next movement after that, zero, you could tell which direction they're moving because when the MACD line is larger than the signal line, you're gonna get an up movement on your histogram. So you can either look at the crossover and see the direction of the crossover, or you can look at the MACD histogram. So again, the basic MACD trading rule is to sell when the MACD line falls below its signal line. Similarly, a buy signal occurs when the MACD line rises above its signal line. It's also popular to buy and sell when MACD goes above or below zero. Why? Because when they cross over, it's above or below zero. So we can see also again in this chart, the very specifics when the market crosses over, you can see exactly what happened and we moved into a downtrend when the markets crossed over. And if you notice, they are actually slightly lagging the market, but they're after the signal being generated when the market is fully confirmed to be moving in that direction. So you would have not gotten this beginning lump because the markets weren't sure whether it was a retracement. When they crossed over and gave you the buy signal, it's a very good, strong buy signal. Same thing with a sell signal. That's the first way you use MACD, but it's also a very simplistic way because you need to combine MACD with two other pieces of information because you need to look at volume for volume to confirm 
that the crossover isn't just a false signal. Because he can give you a lot of crossovers when the markets are, especially when they're active. So you need something like RSI and volume to help confirm what the indicator is telling you. Now, MACD is also useful as an overbought or oversold indicator. Now, most people use RSI as stochastics for being overbought and oversold. But remember, an overbought market, and oversold market can remain overbought or oversold for a period of time. It's just telling you if it's overbought, there's too many buyers in the market, if it's oversold, and it's predicting that the market trend will reverse itself. So when the shorter moving average pulls away dramatically from the longer moving average, in other words, the MACD rises, it is likely that the symbol price is overextending and will soon return to more realistic levels. So in other words, we can use a, like a trend line, but it's not a trend line, to draw the tops of the MACD line and draw the tops of the MACD signal line. When we have a huge divergence or wide divergence between the angle of the MACD signal line and the MACD line, it's telling us the markets are either overbought or oversold. And it has to be depending on the direction the market is moving. And then lastly, we have one of the most important and that is divergence. Okay, and any, an indicator that an end of the current trend may be near occurs when the MACD diverges from the symbol. A bullish divergence occurs when the MACD average indicator is making new highs while price fails to reach new highs. A bearish divergence occurs when the MACD is making new lows while price fails to reach new lows. Now, the thing is, many traders mix up divergence. They think divergence is when you have a crossover that are separating. But divergence isn't that. Divergence is when the price diverges from the indicator. So what we can see on this chart right here is like, for example, in this period, we see price falling. So price is making new lower lows. But if we take the MACD line on the chart, the MACD line is making higher lows. So the MACD line or the trend line under the chart and the trend line under the MACD are moving in opposite directions, hence diverging from each other. So that is telling us we are most likely ending the current trend. Now, a bearish divergence occurs when the MACD line is making new lows while price fails to reach new lows. Both of these divergences are most significant when they occur at relatively overbought or oversold levels. So if we're getting an overbought or oversold signal by using the MACD line or combined with RSI or stochastics, then this signal is more Appropriate. Tim asks, and I don't have, unfortunately, time to take you and answer you, is where do you find volume for the new Trader Pro platform? You have to go to the charts, but since I don't have them open, we have a full class, a one-hour class that teaches you how to use the entire new platform. I would recommend you go there, but if you go over to the charts, just click through the indicators and you'll see where they are. Unfortunately, I don't have one open right now that I can show you. Otherwise, I would. So in this case, we can see bearish divergence. We see price making new highs right here. And we see the indicator, the MACD indicator, the black line, forming a downward movement and making new lows. Now, of course, we need to get an entry point. So what will we be using for that entry point? We would be looking at when we got the MACD signal line and or we had the crossover. And that crossover would be a lot more tradable or a lot more valid when we have that combined with the divergence. So when we have the divergence, 
that's telling us that this trend is most likely over. We get the signal with the crossover between the MACD and the MACD signal line, and we would then enter a bullish, a bearish trade in this case. So remember, and like I said, I tried to explain to you, MACD is a derivative of a derivative of a derivative. The MACD histogram is an indicator of an indicator. In fact, MACD is also an indicator of an indicator. This means that the MACD histogram is four steps removed from the price of the underlying security. In other words, it is the fourth derivative of a price. The first derivative is the 12 period moving average minus the 26 period moving average. The second is the MACD, uh, I'm sorry, the first derivative is the 12 day and the 26 day moving averages. The second derivative is the MACD line, which is a 12 day EMA less to 26 day EMA. The third derivative is the MACD signal line, which is a nine period EMA, nine period moving average of the MACD line or number two. And then we have the fourth derivative, which is the MACD histogram, which is the MACD less the MACD signal line. The base for the indicator is always the securities price. It takes four steps to get to the actual price of the MACD histogram. While not necessarily a bad thing, charters should keep in mind when analyzing the MACD histogram. It is an indicator of an indicator. Therefore, it is designed to anticipate signals in MACD, which in turn is designed to identify changes in price momentum of the underlying security. So as with the MACD and the MACD histogram, it's designed to identify convergence, divergence, and crossovers. It is, gives us transaction signals. Okay. It has become standard to plot a separate moving average alongside the moving average, which is used to create clear signals of shifting momentum. In other words, a signal line. This is the trigger line. This is found plotted alongside the indicator and chart. As you can see on the right, the transaction signals are generated when the MACD line crosses through the signal line. And these are buy and sell signals. The basic bullish signal occurs when the MACD line crosses above the signal line. And the basic bearish signal is generated when the MACD line crosses below. Then we have the center line below, which is the zero line. So traders should be aware that a whipsaw effect can be severe in both trending and range bound markets because relatively small movements can cause the indicator to change direction quickly. The large number of false signals can be result in a trader taking many losses. When commission is factored in this equation, the strategy can become very expensive. And that is if used alone. And this is why we would use volume and an indicator like RSI or stochastics to support and verify that these are good trading signals. Because it's not a matter that they give you false signals that it moves against you. A lot of times it'll give you a buy signal, but it doesn't move far enough to let you enter the market or to let you put a stop loss and to cover your spread of moving up. So you need to verify the quality of the signal. So the MACD indicator is the most popular tool in technical analysis because it gives traders the ability to quickly and easily identify short-term trend movements. If there were ever a quest in the world of investing on par with the search for the Holy Grail, it would be acquiring the ability to spot trend changes. There are many ways investors attempt to do this with varying degrees of success, but a common trend tracking tool is the two line moving average convergence and divergence. This tool measures the momentum and can aid investors in spotting changes in the markets. So let's go over and look at a couple quick ways of how MACD is used in real life. So here we built it all on our euro chart. We've got our volume up here. We've got our support and resistance lines. And we would be then looking for our crossovers. And okay. now I'm going to be using showing you three different charts. 
using MACD. Again, do not construe these as any recommendation. Here we see a very, very simple Bitcoin dollar on a weekly basis use of MACD. It's a very clear cut, simple candlestick chart. You can see the movement on a weekly basis. Down below, we can see the MACD histogram and the and the uh, MACD line, the MACD signal line, we see that there was just a short period ago, a crossover. Right here, we also see it in the MACD histogram and we see it falling below. So therefore it is generating a sell signal for us at this point. We can also see a little bit more complicated one but here we have trend lines, and this is the only thing we're concerned with here, is the trend line. And the trend line on the indicator, which are moving in convergence, not divergence. So they're supporting a future move upward and not a change in the markets. But again, this is just another way that MACD is used. And then in this case, we see a very distinct divergence of the MACD down below. And you can see the blue trend line. So we have bullish divergence as Bitcoin makes lower lows, but the MACD fails to get lower. So we can see on the price chart, we're seeing lower lows in a downtrend while we're having a very precise divergence in the MACD indicator. And we have a crossover here, but it wasn't supported by volume. And then right now, or a half hour ago, we had another touch and a crossover, which is being supported by volume. And this one's giving us an indication to continue to sell into the marketplace. But you have to use this with more things, but these are different ways that MACD can be incorporated into your trading system. So on that note, I'm gonna say good night to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. There is, you can see a recorded version of this class by using the same link you used for coming to tonight's class. So thank you very much and have a great trading day. Bye now.